You know, the rich use other people's money. They first, they leverage their credit. They get the best possible credit scores. And then they leverage those scores to get access to other people's money. Mauricio, which is what you were talking about a second ago, I use a Grant Cardone line that, you know, in my mind, guys, like I like to steal this Grant Cardone line. If you don't know Grant Cardone, Mr. 10X, uh, and make it mine, but I can, it's his. And what he said is debt is how you live in the future. And that applies to the roofing business. Welcome everybody uh, to the webinar with Mr. Carol. How do you pronounce your last name? I don't want to. Well, you could say it the American way, Scaramuza, or you could say the Italian way, Scaramuza. 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 Credit, AKA known as Credit Carl. And I wanted to bring him on, introduce himself uh, to our audience and to our clients and to our uh, people that watch our videos and, and really read our email list. And the reason why I have to bring up is because uh, over the last couple of years, after talking with thousands of roofing company owners, I've really found that uh, credit and financing is a big challenge for roofing companies. And it kind of surprised me because I know these companies make millions of dollars. They have you know, revenue up to five, 10 million sometimes, but they couldn't pay like a simple payment of two or $3,000. So it kind of surprised me. And the reason was because they're very, dependent on cash it's all cash and it, i don't know if you guys are aware of the construction industry but as a whole the construction industry is very slow to pay right if you're if these guys are subcontractors if they work with gcs work with customers sometimes it takes weeks on weeks to actually get payments and some of these payments can be 40 50 100 thousand dollars so it takes a long time for that to happen so that can be a big challenge for a business imagine if you're a business and you're waiting for a hundred thousand dollar check and you're a small business, right? That can really freeze everything you do in your business. You can't make payroll, you can't, uh, you can't pay your suppliers, you can't do every, everything, right? So really a great way to do this is through credit, right? Credit, and that's why I bring him on, because I met uh, Credit Carl a few weeks ago at the AC boot camp with Judge Grant and Matt Marnero. And we connected, and we thought it would be a great idea to bring each other on to really talk about his expertise because Carl's an expert. He charges about $4,500 per hour for a one-hour consultation. So you get to actually ask him questions and really just get understanding of how you can actually boost your credit, right? Um, the goal of this webinar is to increase, to help you increase your credit score so you can grow your roofing company revenue. That's really the whole goal of this, right? All right, Carl. So tell me about yourself, man. Tell me how, how you got started in this and you know, how you can help people. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for uh, having me on this webinar. It was great meeting you out there in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm still piecing together uh, things that I learned at that boot camp and applying them to my business. And I'm super excited about it. Shout out to Matt Monero and Judge Graham. Great boot camp. Great meeting you guys. Love what you're doing. Our businesses are at like similar levels right now as far as, you know, where we're trying to get to. So uh, pretty exciting stuff. But anyway, my background, um, you know, AKA Credit Carl. I've been in the credit world for about 20 years. So uh, over the 20 years in the credit world, I've seen it all. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. I've helped clients with 400 credit scores and we raised the scores from 400 to 650 and they bought their first house. I've also helped clients with 650 scores and we got them into this elusive 800 club and they were able to you know, get access to other people's money. So it's what I've been doing for the last 20 years, looking at credit reports, dissecting them, figuring out you know, how can we improve credit scores. And uh, I own a company, Credit Blueprint Credit Repair. We're located in Philadelphia, and we're moving down to Miami. We got a, an Ooh. office opening up down in Miami. <laughs> Which actually comes with, uh, on a side note here, comes with a lot of obstacles, a lot of opposition, a lot of people telling me that I can't do it. How do you relocate the family and relocate your office? And, you know, just poking holes in a million reasons why I can't just move part of my office down to Miami and set up another shop. So, and that's how, guess what? Those are all clues in life that, you know, you're on the right path. You're doing something bigger, right? When everyone is telling you, you can't do it. You're probably on, on, on a good path right there. So, but yeah, I opened the doors for my company, Credit Blueprint, in 2011. 
Uh, we have, I'll just brag on ourselves just for a second. We have an A rating with the Better Business Bureau. So if you look at credit repair companies, there's not a lot of credit repair companies that have A ratings. Uh, and we've had that for eight consecutive years from the time that we opened the doors in 2011 when we had pretty much 2011. We didn't know what we were doing, man. We were, we were just kind of guessing in the, in the credit space. Uh, we were just kind of like trial and error and trying to figure out how's this credit game work and how can we actually help people. But we've maintained that A rating with the Better Business Bureau for eight years. If you go on Facebook, Instagram, Google, there's thousands of five-star reviews on there that I'm really, really proud of. Uh, and look, our mission here at Credit Blueprint, uh, which I had this mission statement from the time we opened the doors, is to empower all people with the knowledge that they can climb the steps to financial freedom by having the best credit. And, and what I'm talking about there is credit is so much bigger than what I thought it was when I first started this company. In my mind, I started a credit repair company and I said, I'm going to help people buy their first house. I'm going to fix their credit up. I'm going to give them a 650, 680 FICO credit score. And then I'm going to help buy their first house. And to be honest with you, um, guys, I, I kind of got bored. I was like, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't love the business three, four years ago because of the fact that, is that, are you telling me that the problem I'm solving on this planet is I am helping people get their first house? And I'm, I was missing something. Like, it's bigger than that. Credit is so much bigger than um, you not renting for 10 years and then buying a first house. Because honestly, if we're keeping it real, that's a, just a blueprint for middle America. If you just, your only asset is your house. And that's how you're leveraging your credit to have a house. That's a blueprint for middle America. So this, this credit score, it got my head turning around something is so much bigger than just buying a first house. It's actually, my podcast started to open my mind to, it's how the rich get richer. If you, you're having cash flow problems right now, and you have to wait for $50,000 to come in in a month or three months from now, your business is on hold. You can't grow. You're stalled until that money comes in. So debt, is how you live in the future. Debt is, is if you access other people's money now instead of waiting for that money to come in, boy, guess what you're doing? Now you're focused on growing your business and you're not sitting waiting for cash and, and money to come in for you to get your revenue to the next level. Awesome, awesome. And I want to tell you my quick story because I actually started my business through uh, credit cards, right? Maybe it wasn't the right way, but I did it through that because I had a pretty good credit score. I didn't have cash, right? I didn't have cash. I didn't take out a loan. Um, I usually paid my, uh, all my advertising, all my uh, employees, because I was using contractors at the time, just basically using credit to pay them off. And every month, I would you know, go in debt a little bit. And eventually, I got, you know, I got into $80,000 debt. But I knew that was funding my, really my pathway to the next step in my business, right? I, I did that because I strategically, I wanted to say, where, where, where am I going to be a year from now? And that's what I did, right? So I eventually, when I did that, I, a year from now, I did have the cash. I did pay off all my credit cards. Um, and, you know, I have a very good, very good credit score. Now I have more, a lot more cash in the bank. Mm -hmm. so I don't have to worry about that. But, but what I do every month, and this is something that I do. I don't know if other business, small businesses do it. I just fund really all my operating expenses through uh, business credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for a fact, very, very few uh, roofing companies do this. I don't know why if they're all cash dependent. But as I did, I think it's, I don't know your uh, credit, uh, Mr. Carl, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I run all my business expenses through Amex Platinum Business Card, um, okay. you know, which that business card does not show up on my personal credit report. So, you know, I see that there's a transition there with business owners. Right. If you think about the mindset of like a business owner, an entrepreneur, like they come up with this idea, they want to get into roofing and they maybe they learned it from someone else or their dad was a roofer and they're like, I'm just going to do it. And, and before they get their credit together, they just go, you know, and they're not kind of planning ahead. And that's the beautiful thing about an entrepreneur. But sometimes you get caught up in the fact that maybe you used your personal credit. Maybe you over leveraged $50,000 in personal credit cards. And the next step is how do you transition that? personal credit card debt over to business debt so you can get the, the personal scores higher and then that'll that'll open the door to start to access you know business funding and stuff like that but going back to your point yeah i run all my business expenses through uh american express platinum card for sure 
Mauricio, I want to talk about something else. You just mentioned that you use personal cards to get everything. You use, no, use personal business business cards. You yeah. do use business cards. Okay, yeah. okay. So it's funny. Like if you go back to that boot camp, we we were at that boot camp, and everyone at that boot camp was thinking, okay, how do I scale quickly? How do I get my revenue to the next level? And ninety percent of the people in the room. The way they do it is they're going to have to access other people's money. They're going to have to use business credit cards, business funding, business lines of credit. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do in Miami. Like for me to bring on 10 sales guys and set up a 10,000 square foot office, um, I'm going to need other people's money. I, I don't have that cash right now to just lay that out. So instead of waiting until I get that cash, because what? guess what? There's two plans, right? Plan A could be, well, let me save up you know, X amount of dollars over the next 12 months. And then I'll start the Miami office or let's just, let's just do it right now. We'll use other people's money. Awesome. Awesome. So before the actual webinar, I actually asked uh, my audience uh, some of the biggest questions they had in terms of, you know, credit and funding. So I actually have some of their questions right here. Uh, basically the first question is, you know, what's your biggest challenge with credit? Some of these guys were are asking, some of them were, the answers they're giving a low credit score, bad credit. How do I get additional loans for their business? Uh, one of the guys is asked, and this is actually Clyde Bryan. He said, Over overcoming charge us from the past and then learning to organize current credit and acquiring new credit in a way that I do not overutilize and kill, keep building that score. So if yeah. you want to get into that more. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's start with a, you know, a couple of those are similar, like bad credit and collection accounts. Let's answer those quite like charge off that, that part, that, that, that guy said, uh, how do I overcome charge offs and bad credit? So yeah. that's a good place to start. So look, I call it credit suicide. So if you have collections and charge offs from years ago, like I'll give you an example, let's say it was 2015 and you went through a rough spot with your business and you didn't pay Capital One personal credit card, like for $10,000. And then let's say Capital One sold that debt to like a collection agency, and you still owe, now with interest and all these fees, you owe like $13,000 to this law firm from five years ago. And obviously there's a couple of pieces to that. One, it's like stressful, right? It's like, okay, they're calling me, they're harassing me, what should I do? But here's where the credit suicide comes in. And it's, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mind shift thing because it's the opposite of what you're thinking. So the way credit scores work is it will not reward you, okay? You will not get rewarded for paying collection accounts that are older than 12 to 18 to 24 months. And I'll give you an example why. Let's just say that that person that has that charge off example that I'm talking about from five years ago decides that the $13,000 balance that they have, they're just going to call that company up. And they're going to offer them, let's just say, 50 cents on the dollar for sake of this argument. And they get it for, you know, whatever, $7,000, $6,500, right? And they, they can have a one-time payment for $6,500 and settle that. That'd be the worst thing they could do, and I'll explain why. Because in essence, what they do is they are validating that debt. They are letting all three of the credit bureaus know that, yes, I did not pay this collection agency for the past five years, and by paying it, they take something that's been inactive on their credit report and they make it active again in 2019. So let me back that up for a second. So for example, 35% of the credit score is based on activity. So like you guys have both have vehicle loans, right? You have auto loans, right? So every single month that you make a payment, there's activity. Did you make the payment inside of 30 days or did you not? That's activity. But think about that collection account, that charge off account. There's no activity on it because you haven't paid it in five years. So now you just took something that's been inactive, which is good on a credit report because it's a negative thing. And now you paid it and you brought it active again in 2019. And guess what happens to the credit scores? They tank. So instead of calling, that's what I call credit suicide. That's the customer that doesn't listen to the credit repair expert or tries to fix the credit themselves. And they end up paying that creditor. And look, think about this. Imagine spending $6,500 on a collection account from years ago, and you thought it was going to help your credit scores. And even though the debt is zero now, your scores went down. How pissed off would you be, right? There's the credit suicide that I'm talking about. 
So instead, does that make sense, guys? Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Perfect. No, 100%. Yeah. So, in, so you're like, okay, that's great. All right, so fine. I won't pay old collections and charge offs. What the heck do I do now? Right? The hell do I do? <laughs> so, you know, the net, the, what we do, what my company's good at, and there's other companies out there that have success, I guess, which is sending letters using what's called the Fair Credit Reporting Act and challenging those collections and charge offs and getting them removed from the report based on a couple different things. One, it's old. So we got a real good chance, like five years in the credit world is ancient. <laughs> so, so like I love our chances of getting that thing removed off of the report and the customer not paying anything. Sometimes it's just they mishandled it, meaning Capital One sold it to the collection agency and then that collection agency sold it to another company and then they're reporting the dates new or the balances don't match up with the original balance or something is just not accurate or not verifiable, we can catch them in those small little details and get the thing removed based on the laws that way. So just to recap quickly, if you have charge-offs and collections, if they're outside of 12 to 18 months, don't pay them. It's called credit suicide. Work with a professional and work on getting those things removed with a letter campaign, which is called the Fair Credit Reporting Act, that protects you as a consumer. And that'll start to boost your scores, number one right? Because credit scores are king. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then uh, it saves your pocket, right? You don't have to spend six, $7,000 on a debt from years ago. So there's, there's one answer for that, for that. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate awesome. it. Next question that a lot of people had is, you know, what question, what, you know, what are the biggest challenges and in, in, in getting access to OPM? How do you get access to OPM? How do you get, how do you get started? Uh, you know, OPM yep. stands for other people's money. Yep. So let's talk about that, right? So first of all, you know, I'm wearing this hat, 800 Club, and I used to call it the 800 FICO Club because FICO, I don't know if you guys know what FICO is, but FICO is your credit score. It's the only score that matters. It stands for the Fair Isaac Company. It's been around since 1952. And the reason I'm telling you about FICO is because that's what lenders look at. When you go to get an automobile, when you go to get a mortgage, when you go to get business funding, they're looking at your FICO credit score. Now, FICO credit scores range from 300 to 850. So that's why this club right here, I read an article recently that said 20% of the country has an 800 credit score better. I don't believe that. I think it's lower than that because they're, what they're doing is – like there's these sites out there that come up with their version of what they think a FICO score is. Like, for example, like Credit Karma, uh, some of these fake sites, and they're boosting up the scores, making you think the score is higher than it is. So I don't think that 20% of the country has an 800 score. But the point is this. This is a great credit score to have. And this score, this personal score, this is where people get confused. This personal credit score, the higher your personal credit score, that is opens the door to business credit cards, business funding, business lines of credit. That's where it starts. So here's the confusion. People go, oh, I'm not worried about my personal credit score. I need business funding, so I need to work on my business credit. That's not true at all. A personal credit score, you can skip the business credit thing. You don't need to work on business credit and trade lines and stuff like that. A seven or an 800 FICO personal score opens the door to other people's money and other people's money, business lines of credit, business credit cards. Uh, there's asset based factoring loans that are out there. Um, there's, there's so many, so much OPM, by the way, you use the word OPM ratio. Like this is the best opportunity. It was 2019. We're coming to an end of the year here uh, for 20 years. I've been doing this. I've never seen it just so readily accessible where somebody with a 700 personal score, even if they don't have a business, can get fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in business credit cards. So imagine if you had a great credit score and a great business that was generating real revenue, how much other people's money you could get your hands on. It's amazing. It's amazing. Awesome. So to recap, basically just helping people get really a personal credit score. It really affects your business credit score. If you ignore that, just skip to the bit of personal credit score. And once you have that, then you can actually focus on actually accessing OPM. Yeah. Now let me give some tips there too. So like we skipped over, we went from like someone that has bad credit and charge offs. And then we skipped over, okay, how do you get in this club? Let's talk about the person that's like, 
in the mid sixes or high sixes FICO score wise, and they want to get to that 700 or 800 score. So one of the things they could do, I mean, first thing you should do is call my company, but let's say that you're that guy or that girl that wants to do everything yourself. Uh, you can ask for simple credit line increases. So for example, let's say you have a, you know, a chase credit card on the personal side of things. It's $10,000. And that chase credit card you're managing um, smartly. Like you, you have the balance at, let's just say a thousand dollars with a $10,000 credit limit. It's a good opportunity for you to go in and ask chase for $20,000. Hey guys, I, you know, you call chase and say, look, I want a line increase. I've been with you for five years. Um, and those line increases will help you boost your credit scores. And I'm going to give you an example why. So, uh, one of my old business partners, super smart guy, one of the guys before I started this business in 2011, he graduated number one at Harvard. So just kind of imagine like, you know, what you're dealing with there. Super smart guy, um, super analytical. And he, he taught me everything I knew about credit. He was the first guy that really started to figure out this, they call it the FICO algorithm. And he really started to understand it. And he started to teach me how it was working. And he brought in his credit report to one of our meetings one time and he had, you know, 842 credit score. And that 842 credit score, he had, the reason he had it was he had $250,000 in available personal credit cards. So he kind of dispelled one of those myths. Like there's a myth out there, like I don't want too much available credit on the personal. Like you'll hear people go, oh, I don't want too much available personal credit cards. That'll hurt me. Well, it won't hurt you if you're manage them, managing those cards properly. If you had $250,000 in credit limits on the personal side and you only owed $20,000, you're not hurting yourself. Matter of fact, that's one of the keys in how you get 700, 800 credit scores. So he proved that out, Mauricio. Like I was able to look at his credit report and see $250,000 in personal credit cards and the highest credit score I've ever seen was an 842. I was like, wow, there's something to this. So that's part of what we coach our clients on. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Uh, one of the other questions they had is what are the biggest challenges in terms of funding and financing that a business, of, especially like think about like a roofing company can have? Yeah. So, you know, it depends on where you're at. You, you have to start to look at your assets. Your credit score is always going to be your greatest asset for easy funding. So if it's, so let, let's just back it up. If your credit's not good, make the investment in your credit, get the 700s like the minimum 700 FICO score opens the door to business funding, business lines of credit. So first thing, no, not good credit. Let's get the credit operating at the highest possible level. Let's say the credit is already at the highest possible level. All right. Now you're step two. Now, Take advantage of the easy money that I'm talking about. Start to get business credit cards like Mauricio is talking about. Get the Amex Platinum. Get these business credit cards that they're giving them away right now. All right? So there's step two. Step three, you know, you want to start to get business lines of credit. Now, business lines of credit are a little harder to get because they're going to want to see you're in business for two years and the tax returns are actually like your adjusted gross income shows money. So like if you walked into, for example, PNC or TD Bank for a business line of credit and you were in business for 12 months, they'd laugh at you. You're going to have an 800 credit score. They'd laugh at you. Uh, you're not going to be able to get that. So if you can't get the business line because you haven't been in business for a couple years, now you got to start to look at other assets with your business, which is if you're in the roofing business, do you have invoices? Do you have money that's outstanding? You have a piece of paper that says someone owes you X amount of dollars. That's an asset. That's what we would call asset-based factoring, where you can borrow against that money that's owed to you, and you can, you can get money right now instead of waiting for 30, 60, 90 days until that money comes in. But I would never go down asset-based factoring until you've exhausted the avenue of business credit cards. So let me just stay there for a second. A lot of, some roofers might be like, hey, man, I do $10 million a year. I don't need business credit cards. I get it. Um, however, if someone that has no business at all and a 700 score can get $50,000 in business credit cards, how much do you think a business could get if they're doing a couple million dollars? A lot. And these business credit cards, some of them right now are at 0%. So it's free money. You could get a credit card for 12 months at 0%. And have a couple hundred thousand dollars in business credit cards. That's the avenue you want to go down before you get into asset-based factoring, where you're borrowing against money that's owed. Because that money, 
That's like short-term money. It's like hard money almost. It's more expensive. So you want to go the least expensive route, which the business credit cards are just, I mean, some of the examples of clients, by the way, we do business funding as well. So we do business credit cards. We help people out. We've gotten people hundreds of thousands of dollars in business credit cards at great rates. And that was how they bridged that gap. Does that make sense? Yeah. And to, just to bring you an example, when, when I had my credit card, I had 0% interest in the first 12 months. So even though I wasn't dead, I wasn't really paying that much interest rate until the second year. So that, that, yep. was, that helped a lot too. Cool. Yeah, 100%, the 0%, the 0%, right? So you just, and, and you want to just keep building. Like whatever you have now business credit card wise, just keep getting more, man. Like just keep getting it as high as possible. Um, you know, and let's just go off subject here for a second because Matt Monera made a really good point, right? We're, talk, we're talking about leveraging your credit scores to get access to other people's money so you can grow your revenue, but you better have a plan. Matt Monera was on my, my podcast and we we're shooting the shit. Matt goes, I know why people, more people don't, if they have business credit cards and business funding, why they don't use it. I said, how come? He said, because they don't have a roadmap, man. Like, see, right, see how clear you guys are with where, what you want to do next? I'm crystal clear, too. I, like, I know, it's, I know I have a roadmap, but it's scary. So if you're in the roofing business and you're like, this is a question you need to ask yourself. If you had $100,000 right now or two hundred dollars or a half million, what would you do with it? Are you guessing? Are you closing your eyes and throwing darts and hoping you hit the bullseye? Or do you have like a real roadmap, a real blueprint to attack and conquer? That's really, really important because like I'm not that guy that tells people to go out and get access to money and just try shit and spend it, right? Like that's, that's not what this is about. Um, you, you definitely want to have some proof of concept and feel really confident in where you're heading because I'll give you an example. I've done it before. I burned through $150,000 of other people's money on radio ads. Like I thought that's how I was going to scale my company. And looking back, I'm like, man, if I had that $150,000 again, what I would have done differently, I would have done a lot of things differently, but I wouldn't have just guessed at $150,000 at radio ads that I didn't even break even on that I lost. So that's the, that's not having a roadmap. That's just guessing like, Hey man, let's, like even now, like if you didn't have a plan with Facebook and you were like, I'm going to grow my roofing business because I'm going to do Facebook ads, but you didn't really have very niche idea on what you were going to do, you could burn through $150,000 real quick on Facebook ads. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You want to say something? Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I agree. I agree with everything you're saying, Carl. I, um, I know like personally, so I'll just, you know, have a little transparency here for everybody. And, um, you know, I had, um, car accidents. I've been in a few car accidents, um, had a few medical bills, had different things, you know, and when I was younger for most of my life, um, and I still actually have some of those things on my credit, you know, uh, when you get in a lawsuit from a car accident or things happen, you know, you're young, you're looking at how much cash you have in the bank. You're looking at this 10,000, $20,000 hospital bill. You, you know, you may not have uh, the ability to get a credit card and then things go into collections. Right. And I'm speaking on behalf of myself and, and what I've learned in life. And then you keep getting those calls like you're talking about. You get stressed out, you're married and you have children, you run a business, you're entrepreneurial, you're, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and you have a big month and you think you hit the lottery because you made a couple hundred grand and then you realize that you're still, you know, 65,000 in the hole, even though you're busting your ass and you have this clarity and vision and you're just so pumped up with purpose and motivation. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, you took the time to talk to us today. You know, I'm grateful once again to, to Judge Graham, Matt Monero. You know, big shout out to you guys at the uh, Attack and Conquer, you know, BurnTheShips.com. Great website, great testimonials from, from Mr. Carl, Credit Carl, uh, myself, and many other people that attended. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I'm learning a lot right now myself. Yeah. And I might actually, you know, give you a call personally. <laughs> you do, it, man. I've, I've been there myself. I started my business with bad credit. So I, I, you know, I, I have empathy for people that have bad credit um, because I, I like literally they I lost my house. I lost my car the first six months that I opened the doors in 2011. So, you know, I, I pretty much risked everything to start this business. And I know what it's like to have bad credit. And I also know what it's like to rebound and have great credit. I know uh, I used to call it credit cocky. I used to say like, you know, I'm I walk into a car dealership. I walk into a mortgage company. I walk in to get business. Money, I'm just cocky on the credit side of things, because I know I got that credit that that bank is looking for. 
So, uh, but just to kind of back up what you were saying just quickly, um, you know, if you're a business owner, you know, I'm, I'm big on wherever your focus goes, the money flows. So a lot of times, you know, business owners are so focused on like their expenses, the budget, or, you know, for the next 12 months, I am going to get myself out of debt. And, you know, some people might not like this, but this is how I've ran my business the whole time. Wherever the focus goes, the money flows. If you're focused on revenue, growing your revenue, okay, that's, that's, that's a good thing to be. That's a good place to be mentally versus the other business owner that's trying to cut costs, that's looking at their expenses, that is afraid to use money because, you know, whatever, X, Y, and Z. So look, wherever your focus goes, the money flows. Focus on, like Judge Graham, um, the money sheet is a great example. If, you know, Judge Graham didn't come into his daily rhythms and meetings when he was building a $500 million company and talk about expenses. What he talked about is where's my money, man? The focus was profit. How do we grow? Where's the revenue at? Boom, 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 right there. Focus, that's a mind shift change versus shit, man, I got $30,000 in debt or $500,000 in debt. How do I get out from it? How do you make more money? Yeah, awesome, awesome. The last, one of the last questions I had is, what mistakes should I avoid with credit and funding? Yeah, I feel like that one I talked about, which is not having a blueprint, right? Learn from my past mistakes. Um, that's one. But also, I, you know, I just did a video on Instagram, credit.carl, where I think the biggest mistake businesses have is no debt. Um, I, look, I've been around some mega successful entrepreneurs. I've been around guys that a couple, very two close friends of mine have built billion dollar companies from literally working out of their house doing a hundred thousand the first year and they have billion dollar publicly traded companies one of them used other people's money the whole way and one of them had so much growth like explosive sales and growth they never had to do that right so it's like i think the mistake that businesses are making is if you're stalled you know why why what what are you doing now that you can duplicate it? Do you have a roadmap and a blueprint that's already worked? And then put some gasoline on that, man. Use money. So the mistake would be is not having debt out there because you want to run a business debt free. Not every business works like my one buddy who didn't use money at all. Like he paid for the buildings in cash and he never brought on people until they had a certain revenue. Well, his was a different type of business. If your business is not like that, then you, you are going to have to have a little bit of debt on the business to maybe get your revenue to the next level and grow and scale. Awesome. Awesome, man. All right, man. I, you have any other, I think that's about it, man. I, I, you have any other, any other, any other tips and tricks you want to, you want to talk about? Like, uh, let's say like, you know, like I, I brought up the point with the typical roofing company owner, you know, there's slow pay construction. They do millions in revenue sometimes but it takes a little bit of time before they actually see their cash hit their bank account. So they're yep. kind of nervous waiting for the cash to hit. It kind of freezes them with their business. So I guess the, the really good thing is it's the first step is first basic step is raised right, getting their personal credit uh, to 700. Is that, is that, is that what you're saying? Step one, 700 personal score. Yep. Yeah. And then Carl, what would you say? Uh, the biggest thing I hear echoed back from our clients and, you know, people I talk to on the phone, when I'm presenting our service of digital marketing and advertising industry specific for, for roofing, uh, Google PPC and Facebook ads is that, you know, Hey, I have a massive bill that I just found out for my project manager that I owe $350,000 to my supplier on material costs, mm -hmm. right? I have to make payroll next Friday. It's Tuesday. Right. And I only have 68,000 in the bank. Yep. Right. How would somebody, in that position, let it be like nine one one, like just figured it out, yep. came back on vacation. Somebody in my team screwed me over, or you know, because those don't just those material bills don't just stack up without you knowing about right. them, right? So right now, now we're fast forwarding. The person doesn't have time. Like, hey, hey, credit Carl, I don't have time to work on my credit, man. I got a nine one one issue right now. Those nine one one issues are more expensive. That's what I would call short-term financing, asset-based factoring where, you know, we, and we do that as well. We have a hedge fund that we work with where we can fund someone in 48 hours, but it's going to be more expensive. Um, they're going to look at, okay, there's $60,000 in the bank account. 
Um, you have a history over the last 12 months of making this many, you know, these are your deposits over the last three months. That's an asset. And then the look at what's outstanding. You have some bills, some money that's due. Those are three pieces that we can put together, right? Plus a good credit score. But, but even then we don't, the credit doesn't matter as much with asset based factoring. We can look at what's in the bank account, right? What's, what's outstanding. What are, what, what's due to you, right? And then what are your bank statements look over the past couple months? And then we can go, okay. Here's, uh, you know, $250,000 we can fund you on Friday. And we've done that. Now, it comes at a cost. It's more expensive, but there, there are deals like that if you have a history of, hey, man, look at my bank account. There's revenue, right? There's a, there's a couple hundred thousand a month coming in there. Like, there's revenue. We can help that person. Awesome. And, Carl, just for everybody that's going to be watching this uh, and watching it now, where, you know, how can somebody reach out to you? If we have a roofing company that sees this, that's a client of ours or so let me, let me just, let me go back a second. Cause I think this is important. So let's say that person, that example we gave is like, I need nine, one money, money, uh, nine, one, one money right now. I'll pay whatever I need it. It's that money will make me more money. I have to pay, you know, all these bills. I get it. You got to make the transition after you get the short term money, go back and focus on the credit scores because that's going to open up the cheaper money. So like, don't skip that stuff. You just be amazed at how many business owners just don't have good credit just because they skipped it and they just went all in and just figured it out. So like go back and work on your personal credit because it'll open up a lot of door, cheaper money, better money, 0% money, 3% money, 5% money versus that asset based factoring money. So how people can find me guys, thanks for having me on the show, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching you guys uh, grow your business. I'm excited. I'll be down there in Miami. So we'll definitely link up for sure. Yeah, but sure. I do all my dirty work on Instagram, credit.carl. Uh, you can go to my personal page, carlscaramuza.com. You can go to the, biz, the, um, the business page, creditblueprint.net. Just send me a DM if you have questions. And um, if it's business funding related, I'll hop on a call. Otherwise, I'll have my team reach out to even get you the best credit. Awesome. Really awesome. appreciate it. Awesome, Carl, man. Yep. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, and I wanted to just, if you guys have any questions about credit, the reason why I brought them on is because they help us really help you. That's really what the goal is. Help us help you. Um, if you get access to something like this, you can start investing in your company and make, make it grow. That's what you want to do. I want you guys to invest in your company like I did, like, like Carl did, like other people are doing as well. Yeah, we want to we wanna help the roofing contractor, our clients and our future clients be able to use credit to fund their digital marketing and advertising expense and investment into their company and building their brand. A lot of people will come on for three months, six months, make a half a million bucks and take that cash really kind of ignorantly to pay those debts off and use us as the magic pill, as I call it. You know, yeah. we don't, we don't feel bad about that. You know, we're, we're happy that we were able to bless people and help, help people in other facets of their business mm -hmm. that they needed help financially. But imagine if you had the credit. Imagine if you worked with Credit Carl and his team over at Credit Blueprint and they were able to fix your personal credit, build your business credit so where you're not taking your hard-earned money, your profits, right, and you're able to keep those profits in the business and use credit to scale your business with Griffey Marketing Pros, utilizing your digital marketing and advertising to scale your business, once again, using credit and not cash so you can have a stronger foundation with your roofing company. Joe, just to add on that, because what you guys are talking about is you proved that from digital marketing standpoint that it's working. We got you more leads. We increased your revenue. Now, when that happens, the person that's really rich, the high net worth person, guess what they do? They put gasoline on the fire. So, you know, they're, they're taking that, the money that they got, and then they're paying off bills with the, with the revenue you created for them, but it should be the opposite. It should be, how do we throw more gasoline on the fire? How do we spend more money with these guys so we can boost our revenue? That's what the rich do, man. They throw gasoline on a fire that's already burning. Amen. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys, man, for joining. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, hit us up. Uh, roofingmarketingpros.com. You can call me at, at that time. Fill out information online and we'll talk more, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, talk to you guys. Yeah, guys. Appreciate you guys, man.